This model was sliced in a custom version of Orca Slicer that integrates an AI chatbot for automatic interpretation of printing parameters based on a text prompt. It seems like AI is everywhere these days, and the 3D printing space is no exception. You've probably already seen AI-generated 3D models. They've been flooding model sharing sites like Printables and Maker World, but many of them are of questionable quality. Later in the video, I'll be trying out these AI model generation tools for myself, comparing the most popular ones to determine which gives the best results. In total, I'll be presenting five unique ways AI can be used within the context of 3D printing to enhance your workflow. So let's go ahead and get into it, starting with AI slicing. The program we're gonna be looking at today is based on Orca Slicer, but it's been forked from it. It's called Just Print, and it's developed by the team behind Obico. But we've got what looks to be an Orca Slicer interface. So you're gonna be familiar with this if you've used Orca Slicer. But what we have at the bottom here is our AI agent. So in this case, we're gonna be able to type messages here that are gonna change our parameters, like layer height, infill percentage, so on and so forth. And we can use natural language prompts, like make it stronger or make it lighter. And that's gonna make it a lot easier for a beginner to make those changes without prior knowledge of what those settings actually do or what they mean. So what I can do here is I can say, do your magic, and it's gonna just think through all of the parameters and make its best determination of what they should be. So it's identified what the model is, it's identified some of the key features like the hull and the cabin. No support is needed due to minimal overhangs. So it's identified the geometry of our model and made some intelligent recommendations based on what it's found. But now let's get it to do something a little bit more advanced. So let's say for instance, I want it to be stronger. So it's changed to a 0.24 draft profile. So the layer height has gotten a little bit coarser. So I don't really wanna do that. I wanna maintain the quality, but just make it stronger. So let's go ahead and say, I want to keep the same quality, just make it stronger. So it has changed the print preset back to 0.2, which is what I wanted it to do. Changing to a honeycomb pattern for the infill, which distributes stress effectively, thus enhancing the strength of the print. It's gonna increase the wall line width. Okay, I think those settings seem pretty good. That's basically what happens when we slice with AI. You give it a model, it makes some recommendations, implements some settings, and then you could go ahead and print it. So what happens if that print didn't turn out, failed or had some sort of quality issue? So that's when the second aspect of the software comes into play, which is troubleshooting. So we can say the print failed. What, what's, a, what's a reasonable failure mode for a Benchy? How do Benchies normally fail? Looks like it has gaps. So it's saying the infill density could be too low. It's saying the infill overlap. We want to make sure there's sufficient overlap between the walls and the infill. It's telling us to check the extrusion multiplier. If it's too low, it could cause under extrusion. That is true. Please make the recommended changes. It's increased the wall overlap to improve the connection between infill and walls. It's increased slightly the extrusion multiplier. We're kind of throwing many things at the wall and seeing what sticks but we're doing those all at the same time. This isn't necessarily the best way to troubleshoot a problem, but it's nice to see that we have a logical way of going through that troubleshooting process and having suggestions made to us based on the parameters that we were actually able to configure. So that's a quick overview of the process of slicing with AI. Now you may have some concerns about this, particularly related to data privacy, given that any model you upload here theoretically goes to the servers of both Obico and OpenAI or Anthropic or whichever AI model it's using underneath the hood. And I think that is a valid concern and I can't speak to the data privacy. I don't know whose servers we're talking to when we're actually talking to this chatbot, but I'd say for now, if you have any sensitive data, you probably should not upload it to this slicer. Okay, so now that we've gone through AI slicing, let's go ahead and actually generate a 3D model using AI. In order to generate an idea for what we're gonna create, of course we could come up with our own, but why not use AI to come up with the idea as well? Here's what it came back with. A futuristic biomechanical hummingbird drone designed for stealth reconnaissance, featuring articulated wings, micro turbines, and a translucent shell showing its internal circuitry. So starting first with Rodin, I'm gonna paste this text prompt from ChatGPT. So the first thing Rodin does is generate a preview image of what the model is gonna look like. And if we don't like that, we can regenerate. Okay, I think this one looks pretty good. I don't love it, 
but we'll go with it. While it's doing that, I'm gonna come over here into our next tool, which is gonna be Meshy AI, and I'll paste the exact same prompt. All right, so we have our first result back from Rodin AI. You can see that the front half of the model looks pretty close to the input image, but not the best result on the back. So what Meshi does, which is kind of cool, is it generates four unique models. And then from those, we can choose our favorite and we can proceed with that and we can refine it. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna use an image as my input instead of just a text prompt. So that should give us a consistent basis to see which of these tools actually generates the best geometry based on the same image. So here's the image that I got ChatGPT to generate. So with that image, I'm gonna go ahead and upload that and see what the resulting model looks like. All right, so we've got our first result back. The wings look really good. The overall shape of the bird is good. Impressed by how good the back of this model looks, considering I only gave this a single image. Looks like Meshi came up with four different models here. Between the four, they all look pretty similar. Maybe we'll go with this one. So now that we've generated a model using two different tools, let's go ahead and compare them and see which is the best. So looking first at the one from Rodin AI, you can see that the geometry is quite good. It captured the aesthetic of the bird, captured most of the details from the input image. So looking now at the result from Meshi, we can see that it automatically textured the model. This is not that relevant to us for 3D printing, but if you were using this for game design or rendering, the fact that there's textures with the model is super, super useful. However, if we turn the texture off and just look at the base geometry, you can see that it doesn't look nearly as good. A lot of the sharpness of detail is really just an illusion from the texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and download both of these and just see how they look in the slicer. And then we can make a determination of which one we're actually gonna print. So we've got our two AI generated 3D models inside our AI slicer. The one on the left is from Rodin AI and the one on the right is from Meshi. The Rodin result is much sharper. So the mesh resolution is a lot higher this may well be a limitation of the plan I'm on on each of these two pieces of software. Could you get an equally sharp mesh from Meshi if you paid more? Probably. But the fact that I was able to get such a sharp mesh on the free plan from Rodin is definitely a plus for them. Let's see what the AI slicer thinks about it and how we should best slice it for printing. So you can see that it's identified it. It says it's a small bird with outstretched wings and a detailed body. Using support structures is advised for the wings and tail to prevent sagging. A brim may help with bed adhesion. So here's the result of our AI generated model being sliced by AI. It uses tree supports, which is a good choice for this organic model. It's got a very fine layer height, which is good to capture all of those fine details. And it's added a brim right here down at the tail to help adhesion because this has a very small point of contact. So now that we've got this done, let's go ahead and print it and see how it looks in real life. So here it is, our very first AI generated and AI sliced 3D model. Let's get it off the plate and see how it looks. So overall, this turned out pretty darn cool, but there are a few issues. Primarily, the support material at the base was not sufficient to hold this tail in place. And you can see that it failed the other thing is that the legs on the bird were very thin and fragile and they broke when I removed the support material. So a human designer probably would have made those a little bit thicker so they could have been more robust. So while this is a good first pass, I think we're a little ways away from AI completely replacing human designers and human operators of 3D printing slicers. One of the things that AI is the best at is coding. And within the context of 3D printing, you can use it to write firmware macros for Clipper for instance. So in a recent video, I talked about how my Sobel SV08 Max had an issue with its pause macro that caused me to lose a multi-hour print. So I pasted that macro over into ChatGPT and asked it to correct it, which it did. I reran it and it seemed okay. But a commenter on that video critiqued me and said that I was foolish 
for trusting AI to do something that might set my 3D printer on fire. Now, frankly, I think that is a little outlandish. I don't think that's theoretically possible. The firmware will say no if your macro tells it to do something silly. But it's a valid concern. 3D printers are a fire risk in some scenarios. So I thought it'd be fun to actually see if AI would write me a macro to set my 3D printer on fire. So let's go ahead and see if it can actually do that. So here's the result. ChatGPT is saying that it cannot help with that. So the AI used its good sense and refused to do what I asked it to do. So it says it can help with safe and responsible testing, but it won't assist with anything dangerous or destructive. I'm gonna tell it that I will be safe, promise. It says, I appreciate the reassurance, but I still can't help with anything that could cause harm or intentionally damage equipment. It says, however, if you're testing thermal protection features in Clipper or wanting to stress test heaters, that it can help me write a macro. So I'm gonna say, please do that. So it says, let's build a safe Clipper macro for testing your heater system and understanding how Clipper's thermal protections work. So that doesn't really seem all that dangerous. I would like it to be a little more ambitious in its pursuit of destruction, uh, but you can see that it's pretty, pretty safe. It's not doing anything crazy. Of course, it could make a mistake, but that's why those firmware level protections exist, like thermal runaway. So I think the risk of AI inadvertently setting your 3D printer on fire is pretty low, but it is good to exercise caution. But you can see how this could be a really good tool to write firmware macros, especially when you don't know the syntax or understand the formatting that you need for Clipper to actually function and use those macros properly. So overall, you can see that there is a lot of great applications for AI, but you do need to be cognizant of its shortcomings and you need to check the output, make sure it's giving you something sensible. But if you use it in a intelligent way and you are thinking through the process, I think it can add a lot of value to our workflows. It can make us much more efficient. It can produce things that we couldn't produce on our own. But I'd love to know what you think. Do you think AI is a good thing? Do you think AI is a bad thing? Let me know in the comments below. One thing I think we can say for sure is that AI is still in its infancy. If this is what we're able to do today, you can only imagine what we're gonna be able to do a year from now, or five years from now, or 10 years from now. That's the optimistic outlook. The pessimistic outlook is that these tools are gonna to affect our ability to actually do these things ourselves. We're gonna lose the skills or we're not gonna develop them in the first place, we're not gonna know how to slice a model. We're not gonna know how to design a model. Certainly people that are getting into the hobby would have no incentive to learn these things in the first place if AI is just gonna do it all for you. So there's a risk associated with the brain drain or the atrophying of our minds not actually learning these skills. But what you could say is that the problems that used to be difficult are now easy and we're ratcheting up the difficulty and now we're able to solve even more difficult problems. It's quite possible. Taking a more critical look at AI-assisted 3D model generation, you might say that it's not a good thing. These models have to be trained using some sort of data. That data had to come from real humans that are generating real 3D models using their talents. And if those are being used to train the models, which are then being monetized and used by other people to generate new outputs based on that initial input, and that person originally that designed the model isn't being compensated whatsoever, then there's definitely a moral issue there and something that I think a lot of people think is not necessarily a good thing. There's also the issue with all of these AI generated models flooding 3D model sharing platforms and congesting them. And then you go to print them, even though the thumbnail looks nice, the model geometry is terrible. Maybe it doesn't print well. So there's this kind of disconnect. And because a lot of these platforms are gamified and you're incentivized to upload models, you get credits and points, you can use them to buy printers. There's an incentive for people to upload just complete crap models just to check a box, just to bolster their profile. But then when the person goes to print it, they realize that it was really poorly designed in the first place. So is AI a good thing in the context of 3D printing? I don't know. I think there's pros and cons. But again, I'd love to know what you think in that comment section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. If there's anything else you'd like to know about AI in the context of 3D printing, anything that you'd like me to explore, you can let me know about that as well, and maybe I'll cover it in a follow-up video. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Taylor, this is YGK 3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.
you want to learn more about how AI works at a fundamental level, you might want to try out the courses on Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. The experience is completely gamified, with user interaction prompts each step of the way. Say you want to learn about AI. Brilliant will start with the fundamentals and progress along to advanced topics, testing your knowledge in the process in a fun and engaging way. Every lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash yGK3D or scan the QR code on screen. You can also click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription by using my link. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.